Hi, this is Steve from SewingGold.com. I'm trying to answer a question for a customer about their thread fraying. I'm going to give you a few examples of why the thread can fray, and there's more than just what I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm sure someone else can uh, post in the comments why their thread is fraying. Um, a lot of times it's just bad thread. But if you don't have bad thread, you actually have good thread. Let's just go over needle size really quickly and thread size. Um, so if I'm using like a 45 weight thread, the minimum size needle that I have to use is uh, size 14. If I'm using 70 weight thread, T70 thread, Tech 70, um, the minimum size needle we're going to have to use is a size 16. Um, going up to T90 thread, minimum size needle size 19. And then going up from there, we're going to do uh, uh, T130 or 135 thread. That's going to be a size 22 needle. And lastly, T200 thread, that's going to be size 24. And it just keeps going up and up. But this is basically this walking foot machine here. Um, I'm trying to sort of replicate a 1541 problem, a Juki 1541. I just don't have any in my shop right now because we're sold out. Uh, so this is just a Taxo T111 a used one I've got in the shop that I'm uh, going to show you what I would do for starters on trying to fix this issue. Now it could just be a timing issue where the hook is too close to the needle which I might show later in the video. I'm just going to show spots where you can get burrs uh, where it could actually catch the thread and stuff you'd want to sand out. So for this video I'm going to have this uh, really fine grit sandpaper here and then you could get that, it's like a stringy sandpaper. I don't know what they actually call it. It's like emery sandpaper or something like that. We're going to use this little one, and I, could, I sometimes cut these. Uh, this is a long piece. I could also sort of ball it up. Uh, what I want to use this for, if you look here, this is the hole where the needle goes. So this is in the feed dog. Sometimes the needle is going to strike inside here, and you're going to get burrs. Every time the needle goes up and down, that thread could catch inside there. So I'm going to want to sand it out inside this hole. We don't want to make the hole too big, so we're just that's why we're using a really fine grit sandpaper. So you could check in here if you could feel anything. It's hard to feel because the hole's so small, but you could grab this sandpaper that I've got here, or that stringy stuff. Like I said, I don't know exactly what it's called, and then just get it inside that hole and then sand it out. Okay. The other place that I see problems with um, is the thread guide here. This thread guide will wear, and then when the thread goes through there, same thing. It, it'll it'll catch ever so little, little, little by little, and then little by little, the thread will start creeping up and shredding. Um, so those are the two spots here. The hook assembly is one of the main spots, and I'm going to have to move the camera for that. Um, and I'm going to show you where we usually generally get. Uh, burrs on the hook assembly. Check your bobbin case too, all around your bobbin case. So on this bobbin case I've got here, give me one second. And there we go. The thread's going to come down inside here. Just check for any burrs inside here too. Okay, anything on the inside. Um, and then let me pause the video for one second. I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see the hook assembly. All right, so if you break a needle, you could damage the hook. So I always feel around here with my, my finger or my nail, feel anything, um, and then also I'll visually inspect it too. It's a little easier to feel it. So then what I'm gonna do, and I've, uh, I've got some little bit of damage here, so I'm gonna grab that really fine sandpaper and I'm just gonna sand it out little by little. Hopefully you guys could see this. I'm gonna sand it out going to go over here if I have any burrs here. Uh, we'll also take a look at the point of the hook, hoping that the point of the hook is still sharp. If you feel anything by the point of the hook, that's where the thread is going to get caught. Sand that out too. You may have to do it more than I'm doing it, obviously. Okay, and then make sure you clean that off. You don't want any of that debris on there. And then I'll try the machine again and see if it's still doing that. Um, those are the few places that I would see uh, damaged and then that could catch your thread and then shred it and it would start creeping up. And usually it's going to creep up toward the top of the machine above the needle. It's, you're never going to see it down here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another thing that could cause shredding. I'm going to pause the video again and I'm going to reposition the camera. Okay, so for this part of the video, 
I just want you to see, the, I took the feed dogs off, so you could actually see the point of the hook here. That's the point of the hook, and there's my needle. You're gonna have a little space between the hook and the needle, so if I push this, you're gonna see that needle flex a little bit, okay? As for how much, it's very minimal. There's no exact measurement I can give you, unfortunately. I'm sure you can grab a micrometer and check that, but there's no exact measurement. What I'm really worried about would be too close. So that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna pause the video, and I'm gonna mess up the timing on this machine and make it too close, and then you'll see. So see the flex there, okay? Let me pause it and I'll show you in a sec. Okay, so now I've adjusted the hook assembly. I've just made it, I've moved it out ever so slightly. Um, I didn't mess up the timing that would be going up and back this way. I moved the hook assembly out uh, to the left. Okay, this is just simulating what could shred the thread also. So technically this is gonna still pick up the stitch. So when I come around, let's see. Excuse that little squeak of the machine. That's the clutch in the motor. So as you see, it's still in the right spot, but there's no flex in that needle anymore. So the point of the hook is literally touching the needle. So that's another way you can get shredding of the thread. So you want to check that out. If you have no flex here, you're going to want to move your hook ever so slightly away. Now with the 1541S, there is a flat spot on the shaft, so it's hard to really knock it out of time going forward and back like this. You'd have to go inside the gearbox to do that. Um, but to actually move the hook side to side, there is three, two to three screws on the hook here. There's one there, and then you keep going around, there's a couple more. Um, you could move it side to side. Um, now those are the few things that I could tell you that could cause shredding. One more thing, now that I'm looking at it, the tension obviously, if we have the tension set way too high, um, that would ca could cause uh, shredding of the thread also. Um, and like I said, there's, there's new, more things that could cause shredding of the thread, especially if you have other machines with where it's just not a compound feed like this, and the plate would be another thing to look at, um, the, the actual needle plate. On this one, the needle plate's not could never really be a problem, you see, because it's a rectangle. On a regular sewing machine or a top and bottom feed walking foot, the hole on the needle plate is just like sort of like that hole on the feed dog. So the hole on the plate, you'd want to sand that out. And that's even smaller than that hole, so it's a little difficult to get inside there. Okay, so those are a few things that you're going to want to check out. Um, please leave comments below if you guys have any other ideas. That would be wonderful to share with everybody else. Um, I'm Steve from uh, SewingGold.com. Thank you very much for watching.